ya youtubers Taz man here bringing you a different kind of episode I think usually I have either fantasy grounds or I have foundry VTT um, however I bringing you this episode so you can get as many of the facts that I know of and you can make your own educated decision I've been looking on YouTube a little bit just to get some ideas you know what what are people actually using out there and why and what I'm finding is very very biased videos you know on roll 20 versus foundry versus VTT uh, uh, versus <laughs> fantasy grounds versus whatever one of the ultimate things that I am definitely seeing as a pattern is that roll 20 really isn't in the ballpark with foundry and vt uh foundry vtt and fantasy grounds so i'm going to focus on those but i want you to know right up front that i'm going to do my best to give an unbiased opinion here i'm going to show you uh the perks and the well the pros and the cons against uh for both of them and ultimately I want you to make the decision now one of the most common things I see out there is you know foundry VT, foundry VTT versus fantasy grounds price uh, I, I saw some guy saying you have to pay $180 then you have to buy all the books and you know this is not true you do not have to have everything in order to start playing now if you want to play more advanced adventures or have more advanced information then yes you do however it's almost the exact same thing with foundry vtt uh in the sense that you have to have D, &D beyond or you have to have the physical books you need to have that stuff because all foundry vtt does uh, out of the gates gives you is uh, the the SRD content and that's exactly what fantasy grounds gives you now there are also pros and cons as far as foundry VTT uh, all your players connect for free and you just have to pay fifty dollars so if we go look on the website real quick you can see that right here uh, Foundry VTT, for example, you pay $50, all your players connect for free, right? They can connect without any any payments of anything. With Fantasy Grounds, yes, there is a higher price. Um, for Standard Edition, which would mean everyone would have to have Standard Edition, it's $40. For one time or $3.99 monthly if you guys want to try it out first you know and then decide to go the $40 after that if you do this if you do standard everyone at your table has to have a standard license um, if you want to have free players which means all your players only have to have the free version the demo or whatever you want to call it uh, the GM whoever's hosting it needs to have FGU Ultimate, which is not $180, it's $150, or $149, probably $99 would be my guess. Or, this is this is actually kind of funny on their site, $9.99 for the first three months, then $9.99 monthly. That's so, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but anyway, what I want to point out here is, if someone has the FGU Ultimate license, then everyone plays for free uh, that connects to the table. They can use the free or standard. However, if they do have the standard license, all players must have the standard license. Now, I have seen, even though it says host game for demo players, it has the little X on it, i pretty sure I have connected a single demo or free player to a standard table and it actually did work that might that might have been a glitch that might have been something else but it did work once for me so obviously you are looking at yes if I go fantasy grounds and I want all my players to be able to connect for free then it's $150 one-time purchase 
or if you want to force all your players to have to pay as well then it's forty dollars each so you know if you have a table of say five people between you all you could pay two hundred dollars or everyone could kind of pool their money pay hundred forty nine dollars and save that other fifty dollars for something else so price wise yes foundry as far as I'm concerned has the better deal one of the advantages fantasy grounds has over foundry is fantasy grounds also has licensing rights with uh, Wizards of the Coast this means that they can actually sell Wizard of the Coast product for found uh, for fantasy grounds where foundry cannot do that one of the other things I, I keep hearing I kind of mentioned this earlier is out of the box you cannot download foundry VTT you can't even get a download link uh, unless you have purchased it now all your players can connect for free but you can't even play with it other than going to the where is it the web demo which really you can't connect to or anything like that it's just showing you the features so with foundry vtt you're also looking at maybe having a D, D beyond which if you look at D, D beyond it's 50 55 dollars a year for the master 26 dollars for the hero tier or it's going to be a little more expensive if you actually do the semi-annual or if you only do it month by month then it ends up being considerably more so you're actually saving a bit by doing the yearly payment but I do want to tack that on because with Foundry VTT there used to be an add-on that would uh, connect with D&D Beyond and that add-on would make it so that it could actually download and use your assets here at D&D uh, Beyond one downside is you have to have all the assets that you need so you know you need to have um, the source book uh, you need to have for example the I passed it wait uh, I way past it you have to have the players handbook which is you know 2499 uh, and that's the same thing with Fantasy Grounds. If I want the Player's Handbook content, I have to purchase it. Either I have to purchase it on DM's Guild and have it be a Foundry module, or I can get it directly from, or not Foundry, Fantasy Grounds. Their, their names are way too close for me. Uh, or I buy it from Smiteworks. And one advantage to that is as updates happen to it, erratas and all that stuff, it will automatically be updated. Um, and anytime I log into Fantasy Grounds as a, as a table, it will automatically grab that stuff and put it into my vault. So this is another thing to keep in, in mind as you're looking at, okay, now we're looking a little different for price. Bare bones, yes, Foundry is is the winner. Uh, Fantasy Grounds comes in second at that point, right? So I wanted to uh, go and I forgot I was going to have this done already, but we're going to go just create a empty campaign. Uh, we'll just call this uh, empty or bare bones maybe. B r e b o n e s, and we're going to get a, a look at what Fantasy Grounds gives you right out of the box versus what um, Foundry does. I really wish they had different names. Um, so we're going to go ahead and connect here. Uh, not connect, I mean we're going to create our, our bare bones. And we're going to do the same thing in Foundry here. Uh, we're going to go in here. We're not going to have any model modules in here other than the base ones. We're going to add a game system of Dungeons Dragons 5e because that's kind of what I do the most. And then hit enter. 
DD5E right here. Go ahead and install this. I think, yes, it says downloading. Okay, we're good. Uh, so let's go ahead there, let that go, let this go. So Fantasy Grounds, like I said, right out of, right out of the gates, uh, gives you your desktop here. If we go into library, we're going to see extra things because I do have uh, the vault uh, with various things in it. However, everybody gets all these SRD things. You get this calendars. You do not get that. Don't get that. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. But we're going to load just the base stuff. We have the beast tree. The best tree. I always call it Beastry, I know that's not what it's called. We have the SRD, the main SRD, the data itself for the, the how to play kind of thing. <coughs> we have magic items. And then as I recall, there is one more. So let's go to page two. Uh, it does come with the FG battle map, so it gives you a couple maps. Gives you the default fumble and hit critical hit table. Uh, doesn't give you Tasha's Cauldron. Uh, I thought there was one in here. There it is. The basic rules for players. And I know it gives you the calendar. I know it doesn't do that. Oh, it does give you the basic rules for the DM as well. And I think that is it. And let's just load everything it gives you. Yeah, everything else it doesn't give you. So right out of the gates, it gives you these SRDs. Uh, the SRD stuff, it gives you the basic rules, the basic rules for players, and some battle maps. So with this, what can you do? Well, let's go look. This gives us NPCs. It's not as many as if I had the monster manual, but it does give us five pages of NPCs that are fairly large. Uh, you know, I'm sure it has goblins in there if you want to fight goblins. There you go. We got goblins, hobgoblins, um, and stuff like that. So we can sort it by CR if we want to say we only want to see the things that are like uh, one-fourth. Now we can see everything that's uh, got a one-fourth CR rating. We can sort it by type, aberration, fey, beast, all that fun stuff. Um, so it gives us a fair amount of NPCs. It also, if we go to do, I need to go and turn on all things real quick. Sidebar. Let's just turn on everything. Close it. Close it. Uh, so we also have uh, races, classes and races that we can do. So here you can see uh, from the SRD data we get Dragonborn. From the rules we get Dwarf. We also get that from SRD data. But it gives us a decent amount of races to play. It's not all of them. I mean, clearly we're missing... There's Halfling. Off the top of my head, I can't think of what we're missing. <laughs> um, and it also gives us some classes. But once again, this is not all the classes. I believe War uh, Warlock isn't in here. Oh, Warlock is in here. It's part of the SRD. Uh, Sorcerer, Rogue, Ranger, Paladin, Monk, Fighter... And I also can't think of any of the, the the classes. But as you can see, it does come with stuff. I can play Dungeons & Dragons without paying any additional money. Um, other than, say, the standard license and where I make everyone else do the same thing. Let's go look at Foundry real quick. I think this should be done. Uh, close. So here's Foundry, it has 5th edition. Let's go ahead and do a game world. We'll create a new one. We will say it is for 5th edition. That's the one we have. Don't We're not worried about anything else. We're going to do B-A-R-E. 
B O M E S, the same. And create world. Oh, whoops. World name, bare bones. Bare bones. B O N N E S. I bet you forgot. I bet you didn't know that's how you spell bare bones. Um, so let's go bare bones here. I'm going to create the world. And go ahead and launch the world. We don't have any security on it, so we don't need to put any uh, special things on here. Let's just Jane, join Jane. <laughs> so as you can see, also here with uh, Foundry, we have a nice table. We have a hot bar thing for macros. We can see who's playing. We have our little options for our different maps and stuff. If we come over to the compendium, you can also see we have monsters from the SRD. We have D&D &D heroes, the starter heroes. This is part of the uh, 5e thing. They give us some heroes to start with. Uh, we have class features, classes, items, monster features, racial features, spells, trade goods, and then of course the rules. So it gives us a fair amount of stuff. When we go look at classes, we should see basically the same things we saw in, in, uh, in uh, Fantasy Grounds. And if we go look at, what was the other one, races? That's racial features. Oh, actually, that was one of my backgrounds. And races is kind of my pet peeve with Foundry VTT. There is no uh, race or, or um, background uh, compendium. So, I mean, if you wanted to make your own, you could always do that. However, there's also not a background or um, something for making your, your backgrounds and stuff here. You can see, like, classes are actually, where was classes, is considered items. It's part of an item compendium. Um, I thought they actually added something for background in here but it actually wasn't specifically for that it was just kind of a text box so here you go now you can see basically they have the same stuff uh, fantasy grounds comes out a little bit more on top because it has all the backgrounds it has and I can prove that uh, I didn't actually it's not all the backgrounds it's the free stuff which is pretty much acolyte criminal folk hero noble sage soldier and spy um, but it has all that information right here at your fingertips. Uh, if you want to know more about the Acolyte, you just boom, click there, and here's the information. It gives you tables on personality traits uh, for your different, uh, what are they called? Background, uh, just characteristics. It's right there in my face. Uh, so it has a table so you can roll your character traits. These are all found in the player's handbook, right? Or if we went to the library, these would be found in the, probably rules DM would be my guess. Maybe, I don't know where it is to tell you the truth. Or it could just be in data. Yes, data actually is where it is. So if we come in here and we go look at races, we can get information. The same stuff is clicking on that. We can see ability, score increase, the age, alignment, speed, all the stuff that that race gives you. Then also with the classes, we can, uh, classes right here, we can see all the information right here as far as what your increases do all the way up to level 20. So we can see all the way up to level 20 leveling our character. Uh, and the nice thing about Fantasy Grounds is it's simply drag and drop. If I want to make a new character, I click on character here, click on the little plus. I could also click on the character wizard, which is new and uh, added into it. Uh, we're just going to show you more of a bare bones first. So first, let's give it a name. Let's just call it um, Amber. Why not? Uh, then if we want to go give it a class, we come to classes. Uh, let's see, Amber is going to be, let's make her be a ranger. So all we have to do is drag that little eye from here, add it there. You'll see the, the thing automatically knows that with this, I get to choose three skills. 
Uh, as I'm a ranger, I'm probably good with animals. I'm probably good at survival. And I would say probably good with perception. So that's adding our character. If we go to skills, we'll see those things we just added are now here. Now, one thing I've always said is when you're creating character, you should do background first because sometimes those give you skills and you kind of overwrite the skills that you already have. I'm not worried about that right now. I technically, I forgot about it. So Amber here is going to be what race? Uh, so if we come in here, we can click on races. We can say Amber is, let's make her a gnome. Why not? So she is a rock gnome apparently. I don't know where it got rock gnome from. Because that's usually a sub race. Maybe that's because it's all it has. Um, and then of course we have our background. We'll just go ahead and do an acolyte. Actually now I'm going to make her a criminal. So this is actually going to increase her deception and stealth, which are not uh, the ones we chose. So that's definitely good. So she's a criminal rogue. Uh, we have to roll our, our stats. I'm going to go ahead and just click that and put it right here. Go one. So we have a 13. So here's our different, ooh, she's got a really bad stat there. All right, so as a ranger, now if we want to know stuff about ranger, we can always click on this and then click on that so we can see, because there's always a little section in here, and this is in the player's handbook. Uh, hopefully it's here. It should have a quick, quick build, or it just tells you... I believe as a ranger you want dex. I just want to see if that's in here somewhere. Because it's definitely in the player handbook. In fact, we can go look that up real quick just to make sure. So if we go look at the player handbook, by the way, this is my D&D Beyond that I have all the stuff already. So if I go in here to ranger, and we scroll down to quick build. So we want to make dex the highest followed by wisdom. So some of our spells is for wisdom. So that's good. So let's go ahead and we have a six, not a 16. We have a 10, 14. That's not as high as we wanted, unfortunately. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to do this a little different. Let's do uh, die. Uh, actually, I'm going to clear it first. C-L-E-A-R. And let's do slash die. Um, uh, I need to do 4D6. And I think then it is drop lowest 1. I think that's what I need to do. We'll just drag that down here and see if it works. There we go. That's working. So that's getting rid. So let's go ahead and do two, three, four, five, six. That oh, way I don't have to do the little math. Oh my gosh, what a dump dump stats here. Boy. Uh, so let's go ahead and it looks like we're gonna get a plus one to con, plus two to intelligence. And it said, what does it say? Wisdom, right? Uh, Dex followed by wisdom, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're going to put the 15 in our Dex. Not 125, I meant 15. So that gets rid of that. Uh, we'll put the 14 in our wisdom. Um, if I put the 8 here, that puts it at 9. If I put 1 here, that puts it at 10. I think that's pretty good. So let's do 10 here, 
and 9 here. And then that leaves us with two 12s. So we'll do a 12 here and a 12 here. Not the best character, but as you can see, uh, this character is almost ready to play. Now all we have to do is come down here under Ranger, and we can see our proficiencies or our loadouts. So if we come right here, we can see we can have Skelmel or Leather Armor. So now if we go to Inventory, we can go... Uh, items, items, items. So we just go uh, here and say F C A L E. Or oh, whoops, I want a leather. <laughs> L E A T H E R. All right, so we just want some leather. So let's go ahead and give us leather armor. You'll notice that it automatically equips it, which will also boost our AC. So here we had a AC of two. The leather gives us, uh, what is it, 10, 11? I think it's 11. Yes, base 11. So that automatically increased that for us. Let's go ahead and see what else we get. Two, two short swords or two simple melee weapons. Um... Go to weapons. Maybe we'll do two short swords. That seems pretty good, actually. So if we go down, here's our light. Right. All right, so we could come here. And do, we're not there yet. I should have just typed it. <laughs> there we go, short sword. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add one, whoops. Add one, add two, and you'll notice it automatically just increments it for us. And we can close that window and see what else we get. I mean to click character. Alright, so now we have that. Uh, we get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. I'm just going to do Explorers. E-X-P-L-O-R-E-R. -E so we'll just go ahead and drag that. Now one of these I think gives us, yes, it's the SRD. I think this one just says it's an Explorer's pack. The other one actually has it coded where it gives you everything within the pack, right? Uh, and then we get a longbow, a quiver of 20 arrows. So let's go ahead and do long. That is way wrong spelling of long. I can't spell, and that's tiny for me. Hello, NG. Let's just start over. So we get a longbow. We get a quiver. And we get 20 arrows. Actually, I think it's in parentheses. So, A R R O. We come down here, we got 20 arrows. Now, if we want, we could also, you know, put things in places. For example, as we have a quiver, we could actually say that Q U I V E R. We could say that those are inside the quiver, and you'll see that it actually stacks them. This means if I drop my quiver, it'll automatically drop my arrows as well. So that's just a little nice thing that's kind of cool. So, and now you can see we have our longbow, we have our short sword, we can, we can attack with them, we can do damage with them just by clicking. And uh, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what you need. You can always go look up these things and add, you know, additional information. But this is what you get from being a criminal. You get a criminal contact. 
you have a favored enemy as a ranger so in here we could actually say what our favorite enemy is you know here's the information so it really makes it pretty easy as far as creating character this character minus you know having it extra nice of adding all this other stuff is ready to go I mean we could roll our skills we have all our skills done uh, proficiency with them so if we wanted to roll you know animal handling with our proficiency wow that was pretty bad a nat 1 plus 5 so that is basically a character in Fantasy Grounds we're at 30 minutes but we're gonna push on forward um, so this is gonna be a long video <laughs> in a nutshell uh, so now here we are in Uh, here we are in Foundry. If we want to create a character in this, I'm going to be honest, it is a lot harder than doing it in, in Fantasy Grounds. Um, we can do the same thing with the chat. We can go in here and we can say, I think they use slash roll instead, slash R-O-L-L. But I think we can still do the 4D6. I'm trying to remember if he, he uses... I think he has DL1. No. So is it D1? Let's just... Cannot read property tokens of null. I'm not sure why it's saying that to tell you the truth. I thought it was slash help, maybe. I'm not sure if this installed properly. We're, we're gonna pretend like it installed properly though. I'm gonna write down these numbers right here. We're gonna give, we're gonna do our Ranger exactly the same. Um, in fact, let's even call our Amber. I'm gonna write these down real quick uh, for the main stats. We do know that we do get one here and two here, but uh, that doesn't matter. All right, so we have 12 for strength, uh, 15 for dex, we have nine for con, we have uh, 10 for int, 14 for wisdom, and 12 for charisma. All right, so I'm just going to use those same things since I can't get the rolling. Hopefully everything else still works because it, it should. <laughs> so if we come into actors here, we can say create an actor. This is going to be a player character. We'll call her A-M-B-E-R and create a new character. There's Amber right there. Everything's going to be really big, by the way. I apologize for that. But that's because I try having my screen Let's hide the taskbar here. Uh, lock it, no. Small, yes. Yes, that's fine. That gives us a little bit more space. Okay, uh, so anyway, here is our character. Let's go ahead and set those values. Uh, we have, uh, what did I say it was? 12? We have 15, a 9, very low con. Why did I do that as constant? Oh, because it only gave me one, so I couldn't do it. I might have done that different if I was thinking straight. I wasn't thinking straight. Uh, and then 12. So here are our, our values for this. Um, Let's go ahead and also use the same skills. Just so we have them. We have animal handling, deception, perception, stealth, and survival. So animal handling, deception, perception. Okay, got it. Hopefully. So we got animal handling, deception, perception, uh, stealth, and survival. Was that all of them? I got three 
and they gave me two. Okay, so that was our race uh, and our, our class and our background. So background here, we can go up and type that we were a criminal. And our race is gnome, G-N-O-M-E. Alignment, we're not gonna worry about that. Uh, so our hit points are 10. We didn't actually do anything with our hit points on this other one. Uh, if we were to do where I usually allow you to max it out, you can see this is a D10. Uh, so it would be 10 plus your con, which is negative one. Ouch. So it's actually nine. So that's, that's a wee bit painful. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, so here our hit points is actually going to be nine is our max. And we have nine period. Uh, hit dice, we get one. Hello, I can't change that one. Uh, let's see initiative. Our senses as a gnome. Now all this was automatic uh, with our other one. So we do have dark vision is our senses. So we can go add a dark vision uh, by clicking on the little gear and saying dark vision 60. And languages, we didn't pick any, but I'm sure we'd speak gnomish. We are a gnome and common. And if we go look, once again, if we go look in fantasy grounds, it actually lists from the, the sheets what we actually get. So if we go to abilities, we do. Common and Gnomish right there. Uh, the other thing we also get is one gaming set uh, and Thieves Tools. So we have Thieves Tools probably due to our criminal. Uh, and then we get a gaming set. So we have proficiency in Thieves Tools, which we can easily add in here by just adding one. Scroll up, so we just make this longer, and type T H I E V E apostrophe S T O, oops T O O L S, and we'll just say that it is Dex. I don't care, and that will do. So now we have these tools proficiency. Uh, if we come back here, uh, we need to add that stuff. So tools proficiency, we need to say thieves tools and a gaming set. Uh, was it gaming in here? Yeah, gaming set. Uh, armor proficiencies, we know we have, was it leather and, I mean, I guess we, technically I should be doing this right here. So we can come to the compendium, like I said, uh, with the race stuff, not so much, other than you have features, you, you need to know which features you actually have, which is where having the rules or something like that is going to help. So if we come into races, uh, we can go to Gnome, Rock Gnome technically, and here we can see our details, nothing there, effects, nothing there. So we can see we have Artificer's Lore, which is when we make a history check. Okay, so we have those things. I'm not going to worry about these other things as much, um, but I do want to go look under, not, actually here's our gnome under here too. Uh, if we go to classes though, and then go to Ranger, like show. So we can see 1d10 hit point, uh, 1d10 for our dice. Uh, our armor, light and medium armor and shields. So if we come under armor proficiencies, we can say light, medium, and shields. Uh, we come over here again and our saving throws, we have to go choose those as strength and dex. 
There's our saving throws for strength and dex. Uh, I don't know, we already did that, so that's good. Uh, simple and martial weapons. So if we go to weapon proficiencies, we can say simple and martial, i.e. all. <laughs> and do, do, do. No tool proficiencies, same throw. We already did that. And then, of course, we add our items. So if we come in here, I think we don't have any immunities, vulnerabilities, and it doesn't look like any of that. So we're good. We can go over to our inventory now and add our weapons. We had two short swords is what we gave her, right? So let's go to the item SRD. Go ahead and type... S H O R T uh, so short sword and short sword so two short swords uh, she had a longbow I, I imagine a, a gnome holding a longbow I mean a short bow seems like it would look like a longbow to a a, a gnome so <laughs> that's kind of interesting so we have long sword longbow a longbow, we have a quiver. Here's our quiver. It goes under containers. We have arrows. And I don't, does that give us a quantity thing? Uh, it doesn't look like it does give us quantity. Attack bonus. And maybe we just label it. Say arrows 20. And say close. There we go. So now we have our arrows. Uh, what else did we do with our other one? We went features classes, ratio features. All right, so let's go look at gnome real quick, rock gnome. We already did that. And I guess it would be good to add these under features because these are racial technically they're not racial features they're racial traits so we could maybe add that there yeah passive trait tinker okay Nothing else there. And like I said, we we have the same stuff on our other one. I mean, uh, this is going to roll as a tinker, I guess. But my guess is it's not going to work because we have that token error thing. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, clearly I don't have this installed correctly all the way. Uh, so don't judge the the app for that. Uh, what I just wanted to do is point out, you know, they're different. Um, and I do think, personally for me, the fact that, oh, we're not a level yet either. How do we get level sheet? I don't remember where you change. Oh, actually, I do. We're not. We're not a. We're not a class yet. Uh, we need to go. I think it's under features. Yeah, there it is. Class right there. We didn't add our class yet. So let's go ahead and do classes. Ranger, and there we go. Now we're a ranger. I was trying to figure that one out. Um, so you kind of see this is. It's not terribly hard, uh, but I think there's a lot more automation with the Fantasy Grounds as far as character creation. However, you know, you can actually play 
D and D, you know, right from the moment you purchase it with both of them. And that's what I wanted to point out. You do say, I mean, you can buy the books and stuff for Fantasy Grounds. They cost as much as the book actually is to purchase. Like if we went over here to uh, Fantasy Grounds website, for example, uh, we want to go to the store and let's just, let's look at bundles, for example, here. And wait for it to load. So here you can see that actually bundles probably wasn't the best thing to go under because it's going to have everything. Um, let's just go under shop because then we like have sorting and everything. So for example, it looks like D and D essentials uh, right now is 15% off. So to buy the complete set, which if we go look at it is basically giving you the Dungeon Master's Guide, Dungeon, uh, the Monster Manual, Mordecai's Torn, uh, D and D Player's Handbook, Sword Coast Adventures, all these books, uh, which is they're about thirty bucks each. It looks like uh, you can get all of them, for example, for the low, low price of two hundred three dollars. You know, but you do not need that. And it's the same thing. If I have the physical books, I've already bought them. I can use them with Fantasy Grounds. I can use them with uh, d d Beyond. I can also uh, have the books here, you know, uh, not with d d Beyond, with Foundry. So <clears throat> ultimately, don't let all these people out there say, well, now if you get Fantasy Grounds, you're looking at paying, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars. You have to rebuy everything you've already got. Because it's not true. You can play without rebuying everything. Um, and that's with both of them. Uh, it's just easier if you actually have those resources. You know, I can create virtually those same resources. You know, I can add items manually. I can come in here to items and add them manually. I can add, you know, all different kinds of things manually. Uh, but it's nicer to actually have the ones that uh, are updated and maintained. So there you go. I think this is uh, this has been like a f almost 50 minute video, really long. But like I said, I'm trying to be unbiased. Uh, my personal preference for ease of play and stuff like that is Fantasy Grounds. And if you want to know more about why, I can make more videos where I'm comparing different aspects. There are lots and lots of aspects that I think Foundry is blowing Fantasy Grounds out of the water with. Um, Foundry, uh, Fantasy Grounds is getting better and catching up in various things. But ultimately, the choice is yours. Choose whichever one you think meets your criteria. Uh, if you have the funding and stuff like that, get whichever one you want, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to say that if you have the funding, get this one over this one. I, I was almost going to say that, and I don't want to do that. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Sorry it ran so long. If you did enjoy it, Leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. Don't forget to tell everyone you know about my channel. Come check it out. Check out the videos on it. If they like it, they can sub, and we can just grow the channel. It'll be awesome. And that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.